Okay, well, look, my next guests are all entrepreneurs who have drive for creativity and self-sufficiency in these hard times and makes them an inspiration to us all. Give a really warm welcome to Sean Gallagher, Orla Reynolds, and Suzanne Brown. Right, tell us about yourself, Sean. I find you fascinating because you lost your job, really. You were in the construction trade, weren't you? But you didn't, yeah. you didn't sit down and moan and weep. No. Tell me what you did. Um, well, I suppose it, it came from my love of gardening. And I suppose when things got a bit quiet, um, I found myself doing a wee bit more and more in the garden. So I, um, it just relieved stress, if nothing else, because that's one of the great things about gardening. If you go out in the evening yeah. with a hose after five minutes, you don't realize what your problems were, you know? So, so I said, listen, what can I do? What can I use my construction skills and my love of garden? How can I combine them? So I kind of thought there was a, a niche in the market, maybe the fact that I live in Selbridge and I'm so near Dublin that I said, right, somebody in the city might know where to get a bit of timber, some soil, and they might know anything about growing veg. So rather than set up a website, say, um, being real, extravagant and trying to sell, sell, sell. I says, I'm going to combine the two and put loads of tips on it so I can get the people to my site for starters. But basically, it, it's just... Um, it's called... Patchworkveg.com. Because we have it over there. So if you talk me through it... Well, that's basically just um, one of our very standard raised beds that we would do. Um, and we would bring that bed. It's pressure-treated timber. It's lined. And we would bring that bed with the soil to your garden, set it up with the soil in the garden, and leave it ready for you to start growing. Or, if you wanted, we can bring some baby plants and put them in for you as well. And what kind of plants do you have that in at the moment? And the front there, there to the left, there's onions. Behind it, we have chard. It, it, this is just an example of what can be in a bed. Yeah. There'll probably be people ringing it's in there It's a great idea. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's very simple, you know. And it's just, it's off the ground. It's good for people with bad backs. Um, I have to yet invent the one that keeps the slugs away. Now, if I do that, I'll be a millionaire, you know. Um, no, it, it's, it's, it's a very simple idea. It's not rocket science. And is it doing okay for you? Yeah, yeah. This is our third year now, and um, it, it's, it's going well. We have got well a, we're just building the brand. That's what we're trying to do. Congrats to you. And Orla, you're just starting off because you're just out of college. But yeah. tell me about your idea. Yeah, well, I just graduated from DIT in June, so this is my final year collection and it's called As If From Nowhere, so it's an independently functioning bookcase that houses okay. your four dining chairs. We can look at it now yeah. as well, yeah. So tell us about this now. Michelle's actually going to talk us through it and you're going to yes. do it as you talk us through so it. So basically, it's, there's a square cut out, so the movement is like taking a book off the shelf. Um, it was inspired by the theatre, so it's like a scene change. So it goes from bookcase to dining. A table and chairs. Four table, four chairs and two tables. Yeah. Wow. And how, where did you get that idea? Um, it was just from looking at the theatre. I used to be a dancer, and okay. I was a ballet dancer from the age of four. And um, I just wanted to focus the collection on dance somehow. And but then again, it became quite sculptural, and I love making multifunctional pieces. So I started writing my pieces on set design. And I was looking at the home as a stage and how our lives play out in these four walls. And the walls were the most wasted space. Yeah. And that's just brilliant. I mean, not for everyone. But like if you're in a small apartment or a yeah. small flat, that's yeah. just perfect, It's isn't apartment it? living or catering to the unexpected guest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great. And Michelle has done great work putting them all yeah. down. Thanks a million, Michelle. That looks fantastic. Thank you. And now we have yours, Suzanne. Tell me about your great idea. Well, we have, a, we have a number of products in our range. Our range is called Clever Mama. Um, it started out after I had my first daughter, Lara, who's at six weeks old, and myself and my sister, Martina, decided to set up an online website. So initially, we started importing other people's products, but very quickly, we realized that in order to actually make money, we needed to actually export. So with that, we developed our own brand. Show me some of your own products. Um, the first product that I have here is our very first product and it's still our number one selling item. It's very simple. As anybody knows, when you're bathing a new baby, they're small, they're wriggly, and especially first home from, you know, yeah. from the hospital and things like that. So the idea is very simple. Clips around your neck like an apron. So it gives you two free hands. So I'll just pick up my lovely assistant. <laughs> you little so, baby. 
So you can basically pick the baby up with two free hands, directly out of the back, onto your chest, you scoop up, put the hood on, and then you wrap and wrap. Cool. So that's our first product, and uh, it's a very simple product. It's, um, you know, it's a practical product, and that's what most of the products in the Clever Mama range are. Um, as I said, they one. ones that have to be used over and over and over yeah, no, again. That's a great idea. And the um, mat? The, the mat, well, actually, this sort of came because I have two kids, and when you put the two in the back, one was always so short-changed, and one always gets the tap end. The older yeah, one usually yeah. tends to get the tap end that gets the knock. So the idea was that we wanted to just, it's a very simple product, but again, I couldn't find anything in the market, so we decided to develop ourselves a simple full-length bath mat that goes from top to toe. But the best thing about it, which was, as anybody who's ever bathed a child, you'll know when you kneel at the side of the bath, your, kneel, your knees get yeah, quite kill, sore yeah. and, and crippled. So basically, again, with this product, the value add in our product is that you get a free kneeler with it. So again, very simple, very practical product, but it, that's what the brand is about. And then finally... I really have, like this scoop. This, and I'm delighted to say this is actually made in Ireland as well, so this is a, a good thing for us. The idea with the scoop is, is anybody who's ever actually made a bottle, usually when you're counting, by the time you've got to three or four, you forget. You, you forget. So what this is, it is an adjustable scoop, so you can simply pick the exact formula that you want, the number of scoops, so you just simply go to your tin, you scoop, level, and pour. And that's it. So you've got one scoop for all size bottles. And again, <laughs> as I said, it's made in Ireland, so it's uh, made down in Wicklow. But these are all your own ideas, which yes. is great. All three of you have come up with these. Yeah, fantastic. And you've actually yours got on Amazon recently, haven't you? Which is amazing. Really? Well, actually, as it happened, Amazon.com, which is the world's biggest yeah. online retailer, they actually came to us and asked us. Way at which go. point, I think I nearly fell off my desk at the, at yeah. the, in the office. And uh, we're delighted to say that within the first 14 weeks of trading, our bath towel is number one out of 1,267 other towels. So it's, it's doing pretty good. In a diary. <laughs> But like the three of you here, and I go back even to you, Sean, like if there's someone at home now, and there's plenty of people like yourself, even Sean, who ended up without work, without jobs, and they have an idea, what advice do you give them? Go for it? How do you go about just, doing just it? Just do it. You know, it's that, it, it, and, I, and I don't mind, I know there's people out there that are sitting there tonight going, what can I do? Uh, you know, and they think it's the end of the world. And like, we, we've been there, like at the end of the building game, and even at the early days of Patrick Veg, it was very, very tough. But you just, when your back's to the wall, you just go for it. You know, and you've got to do things you never thought you were going to do. If you get up in a day and you're only going to earn 50 euro from doing a full day's work, it's 50 euro you didn't earn. You wouldn't have earned if you stayed at home. And I, I, this attitude of, oh, well, sure, it's not worth me while. Uh, when you're self-employed, you don't get one penny from the government. And that is a great incentive to get up your arse and do something. Yeah. So it, it, it's... Just what about do funding? Do you need, like, in all of you, do you need initially to have some money to get up and going? And where did you get that? Or how do you access that? I'm, I'm in that position at the moment. I'm working with Dublin City Enterprise Board, so I have a mentor, and it's great encouragement. So I'm really at the startup phase. I'm um, writing a business plan, and I'm planning to license abroad. So it's a whole new learning curve. <laughs> I think I need a new degree, <laughs> another one. <laughs> but that's great because you've some, you know, a group kind of helping you. Yes, yeah. 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 And you, Suzanne, how did you initially yeah, we, we initially started again with the, with the Dublin City Enterprise Board as well and have since moved on to the likes of Enterprise Ireland or uh, Dublin Business Innovation Centre. But I think the, the thing is that what a lot of, new, what a lot of people don't realise is there is help out there. You have to go and ask. Mm. And when you ask for the help, listen and do as you're told mm -hmm. you know a lot of people go ask for help but go thanks very much mm -hmm. but then go off and do their own and thing don't listen. yeah mm -hmm. and you Sean how did you get started I, I I didn't need funding I suppose because from my construction and I had a container full of tools and uh -huh. so the tools were there and that was one of the reasons I did this and I had a trailer I had a Jeep so I kind of says right um, banks don't take it off me yet here do we get going and, and, and that's the way it worked and I have to say they've been very very good like that and th that's what it's all about if you show you're trying to do something you know anybody will help you mm. you know because that's the only thing that's going to bring Ireland back is small businesses that's yeah but it. I think I was so interested in all three of you because I just feel you are the kind of three people who've got up your bums as you said and come up with great ideas and thank you because that's what this country needs and I hope you all go on 
from strength to strength. And thanks for coming here tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. the break we have music from Michael Case Hammer and I'll be catching up with my old partner from primetime Mark Little to find out what life has been like for him away from the TV screen see you in a few moments <laughs>